Hi there, this is T again. Welcome uh, to my YouTube channel uh, about uh, Glocks and race guns, mostly about open race gun USPSA and IPSC uh, open division guns. And you've probably seen in my other videos of me running my uh, main uh, nine major open gun based on the G17 frame. I shot that for about two months and uh, it's working great and so now I'm moving on and I built a secondary one so as a backup gun as well as um, a steel shoot so I can shoot minor with it. Uh, the philosophy was to build a, a similar gun but completely different in many ways and that it can run uh, nine minor uh, for steel shoot reliably. And while the other gun was mainly for nine major only, and um, so two different philosophies. So let me go through the gun with you. I've gone through the other one, and I, I nicknamed the one the Franken Clock, and this is the Halinator, uh, based on uh, the guy who helped me uh, put the slide together. So let me show clear first. So let, let's do that first. So here it is. There's no magazine, right? And so I want to show you the slide. It's completely empty, slide back, no magazine, um, at slide point in the safe direction, uh, right, trick the hammer down, as they call it. So let's kind of go over what, uh, what you see here. So this is again based on a G17 frame. And uh, let's go over what I did differently with the frame and or not do with the frame. Uh, something similar to my other open gun, I am a big fan of, uh, skateboard tape or grip tape, however you want to put it, uh, cut up and done uh, so that way it grabs my hands really, really well. Uh, what I did differently with this one is that I left the grooves in place. Uh, the other one, I grinded off all the grooves and I undercut the trigger, undercut for the left hand. This one, I left it all uh, stock, basically. And the rationale behind that is this is also my production gun frame. So in a matter of 30 minutes or so, I can bring this gun back to production and shoot it in production class as well as shooting it in open in this configuration. Again, uh, it was based on the idea that this platform is really modular. And if I don't mess with the frame, everything else, you know, you know how glocks break down. You know, in 10 minutes, you can have that just down to the frame alone. So, uh, so this allows me to keep this gun running in both divisions without any issues. I kept a lot of things similar between this one and the other one. Uh, I'm running the SJC Magwell. Again, the different part is I picked the aluminum one with the mat, uh, with the brass insert so that way the, the weight stays light. Again, this is built on trying to be lighter than the other one. I kept the same uh, carver mount for the Seymour. Uh, they now have the 90 degree mount, as you can see here. On the other one, I had to have that custom made. So this one, they already have it, so I just went out and purchased it. And I'll kind of go over that as well. Again, to keep things all the same, there's the gas pedal, which I think is hugely important in shooting open. Really helps when you start to shoot really fast uh, to keep the recoil in better control. Uh, and then I went with the Carver uh, sl um, slide release or uh, slide racker, as they call it. Again, it's because the space between here is so small. Uh, when I went with the SJC, I had to grind it down so I can get my hand in there. And then, uh, so this one, I guess decided to go ahead and go with a smaller one to begin with. I went with the SJC 11 port compensator and see how that works in comparison to my other modified compensator. And it seems to work uh, pretty well. I'll go kind of go over that as well. Internally, I basically uh, wanted to try a flat trigger. And uh, in my research, the only flat trigger I found was Salen Arms. And uh, they, you have to send your frame in, all this type of stuff. Um, I was trying to find a different way of, of get, just getting a flat trigger. So I found that uh, you, know, you can find replicas or airsoft triggers. And I ordered uh, a few of them and uh, basically modify it to work with a stock trigger bar. And so I kind of go over that in a little bit. It works really well and uh, it doesn't seem to have problems. I've put about 500 rounds through it with uh, no issues. There's definitely a pro and con to it and uh, that I will go through with a review at another time. 
uh, I went again with a similar uh, slide release, again to keep it small enough so that way your left hand doesn't end up pushing on it too hard as you squeeze and your magazine falls out. So, and that's the kind of sort of the external side of it. And then I'll go over the internals in a little bit. I didn't go with the, ex uh, with the extended slide lock. Again, with the slide racker, you know, it's really, I don't know, redundant or not necessarily. I mean, but I have it on the other gun, so, you know, who knows. So let me tear a short, take this off uh, part real quick and show you the slide and show the internals what's going on in there. So again, you know, it just unscrew this a little bit and I have it really tight on there. So you, you just yank it out. All right, so there it comes. That way it doesn't go flying off again. Uh, Loctite's going to be your buddy when it comes to open gun. Almost everything comes loose. And so you really want to be on top of that. So you don't start losing parts and bolts all over the place. So almost every bolt is Loctite either in blue or in red. Uh, and the barrel, you definitely got to find that really high temperature Loctite. And then some people even bolt here and bolt on the other side as well as underneath to keep that from loosening up and uh, you know and so in the different city at different cut states you might have to pin it in order to do that so after this comes apart you know again extended slide release is really key uh, it's really hard to get your hands in here I don't know what mounts even the SJC mount there's not a huge of opening for that so it makes it a lot easier to grab so you want to grab that slide forward because it's all out so let's talk a little bit about the frame and etc. and we'll go from there. So internally, uh, it's not anything different. It's a stock um, uh, trigger bar and uh, pretty much in stock injectors with a ghost connector and then uh, with a bolt on this side and I know Zeb makes it, uh, ZD, several other people make it so they can adjust the pre-travel, I mean, not, sorry, the over-travel. And as you can see from this, it's quite a bit adjusted uh, forward. And I'll, I'll kind of go over the pros and cons of that to you. Uh, here's the trigger, and the trigger has a pre-travel adjustment on it. And uh, when the, the airsoft version or the replica version, I don't know how you want to put it, uh, the bolt is way too small. So I had to re-tap it, put a longer bolt in there so that way you can actually really adjust the pre-travel down to a minimum. And then you have to modify the safety, of course, in order for to get the safety to work. And so the negative side about that is that, like the Zeb on my other gun, the over travel is done on the trigger. So that doesn't put a lot of tension on the spring back here. And the felt trigger pull is a lot lighter. This is a heavier felt trigger pull, even though the reset and the pre-travels are extremely short. So um, that might be a consideration for what type of trigger you do. But I really like the flat trigger. It's really, really cool. And for shooting steel, if I'm not getting, you know, 0 0.1714 split times, I can live with that. Uh, but in an open gun, I really want that split set time to be below 0 0.20 so your double taps can be faster. So this is how this is mounted. And I'll go over this mount in a, in a few minutes after I go cover everything else. So going to the uh, slide itself. Uh, you can see it's been lightened a lot more than my other slide. There's a giant uh, cutout here to take the weight off. Uh, a typical Glock slide weighs about 13 or so plus ounces. And uh, my other slide is only about an ounce taken off, a little bit more than an ounce. And I wanted to take this down to about 10. So, um, you know, you have to lower the ejection port, of course, to help with the ejection issues, potentially. So that's normal to have done with an open gun. And then I had the openings here uh, done. So they cut out here rather than just being, um, you know, surface uh, material taken off. And then it matches on the same on the other side. And back here is where the Glock is really, really heavy. And he took a significant amount off. You can see how deep that is. So the slide is, is a lot lighter than the other slide, you know, another, another ounce or so off from the other slide. Uh, unlike the other gun, I'm using a Lone Wolf a match barrel. It, ha it doesn't like uh, long uh, length bullets, so the OAL has to be a little bit shorter than my KKM barrel. Even though it has been throated and reamed and etc., somehow it doesn't like it. It gets hung up on the way up, uh, but running a slightly shorter bullet seems to be no problem. 
Tunson Sky Rod with an uh, ISMI uh, 10 pound spring works both well on this gun with both major and minor and more importantly it works well with minor uh, but coming back here I have the uh, Zev extended lighten uh, you know a striker pin striker and that seems to work well with both guns with a three pound spring again uh, don't go any light in three pounds unless you like light strikes or you want to run really really soft primers uh, which is not my favorite because reloading becomes more difficult and then the titanium plunger with the stock spring that two coils have been taken off and then uh, on this gun I'm also running the stock uh, trigger spring so it's a better match uh, the other one has a I mean the six pound springs everybody love it I'm not a big fan because it feels like the trigger pull even though it's very very clear it's feels heavier and again going fast uh, it's uh, you know for me at least I can't really tell I rather have the lighter pull so it's a better match in in my opinion um, if you do get the lone wolf it's about a hundred something dollars cheap in the KKM I don't think it's as precise uh, that's my opinion and uh, and I will I could review that in a later time period just let me know if that's something you guys are interested in uh, so to just take off the uh, the trapped or the uh, captured uh, guy rod and spring and then you can see that uh, I really polished uh, as much as I could all that besides reaming it and uh, you know and making sure that uh, I can take a longer length bullet if I need to but uh, it's really important it gotten better better as I put more and more rounds through it but I'm still keeping my loads a little bit on the shorter side okay uh, heading to the compensator, uh, this is a. Uh, let me put this back together real quick. This is the uh, SJC 11 port compensator, and I'll kind of tell you what the issues I'm having with it is. It seems to work just as well as my other compensator, which was modified by kind of a a big Glock open shooter around this area, who's uh, who really helped me out to get that gun to shoot really well, and I'm very happy with it. It doesn't recoil that hard, and uh, it really keeps the nozzle pretty flat. And I'll put some video up for it for that in the future but um, so what he did with that one was a, basically a carver four port that he made it into two big ports and if you look at uh, Casey's Zev when he was shooting it it only has two big ports that Zev did as well so maybe it allows more gas to release uh, one thing for sure is that it changes the angle of the gas the gas doesn't seem to go back it seems to move forward and up which I like a whole lot better this one with the 11 port sends gas all over the place, coming back and etc. So given this um, mount here, as you can see, I don't know if you can see really, really close, I have moved it way back. And the reason why is that, you know, I can't see out of the lens after about 10 shots. Now let me kind of go through that here and show you real quick here. So this, I don't know if you can see, this is what it looks like after about 15 rounds and as you can see it's, it's in the regular position that it comes in and that's because the gas you see the gas coming out from the port is sending it back and this is literally uh, 15 rounds so that's unacceptable I mean you can't see anything after you know half a stage I mean half a stage you can't see anything so the idea of having all the powder etc coming out that's part of it, but the fact that the gas is flying all over the place is, is not my ideal. Uh, under in my other open gun, let me go over that real quick. In this gun, I never have. I mean, I've run thousands of rounds in that thing to clean the glass. So it has a different um, angle at which the gas exits the compensator. So let me go over what's going on here. So by moving, I first of all I started moving it back there's five bolts that holds this entire plate together so at the beginning you can see how it used to be out at this edge so I went with all five so that's what you saw in the pictures uh, unacceptable then I went back to one a little bit better it went from 15 rounds to maybe 40 rounds to me that's still unacceptable I went back even further and that seemed to be okay I mean I can shoot through maybe 50 60 rounds and then I have to go out and clean the glass and again it's not so heavy that I had to use a uh, you know 
uh, some type of cleaning fluid, I can just wipe it with a cloth, which is another big thing too, because you don't sit there going to the safe area all day long to clean up your glass between every single stage. Uh, that's really uncool. So at this point, it seemed to work pretty well. Now, what's to be tested is that I decided to get rid of, as you can see right here, I decided to get rid of one of the chambers, make it into a larger chamber. Again, hopefully venting more gas, so less felt recoil, as well as changing the angle, because before the line was right here, you can see another port here. So as the gas hits here, it's gonna hit that and wanna come back. So by having it fairly extended out, hopefully it won't send the angle back so much that it hits the glass and uh, now I'm having all types of, of uh, residue on, on the lens itself. Again, based very much on the other compensator, which I know works really well in that sense. So that's a consideration, that's a thought. Um, I sent an email to uh, Bobby Carver regarding that. And uh, again, this is an SJC compensator going into a Carver mount. I noticed that if you take a look at the SJC mounts, they're definitely further back. So um, they're probably aware of that combination. And uh, again, uh, Carver is designing for their compensator. So it might not be an issue with the Carver compensator when it first comes, but it's definitely an issue if you decide to mix the two up. At least it, it, for me, it has been. I use HS6 powder, which is very common for nine major. So it's not like a very, very dirty powder by any means. Uh, it's definitely not the cleanest or the fastest burning, but you need as much gas as possible to keep the compensator, uh, to keep the gun flat and the compensator to work. So uh, it's nothing really unusual except the fact that that's the issue that I have with that gun. Now, I didn't, I didn't go into this with the other open gun, but the reason, the rationale, the reason why I did not go with the SJC mount is one reason is that this allows to have more weight on the front end. You know, the, the Glocks in general are way, way light to begin with in comparison to a uh, standard open gun that's made by STI or SVI or all those other guys. So the more weight you can have on the frame, the less weight you have on the slide, again, it's going to be, it's going to shoot a lot flatter. So having the uh, SJC mount, which is basically, again, I have to drill the frame, which I'm not a big fan of drilling the frame at all since it's polymer to begin with, and getting it just perfect so that you don't have any uh, issues uh, with anything. So that made, that made me nervous. And this has weight in front. The downside of having this mount is you can see how it sticks out below the frame. With that being said, you're very, very limited to amount of uh, holsters that you can use. And uh, you, you see our speed, you can use uh, a couple other holsters, but again, you have to do some modification to all of them for it to work really well. And I can go through that, just leave me a note. If you guys want me to go through my rig, I'll be glad to do that. But basically, that's the reason why I want as much weight on the nose of the gun as, as possible to keep it down. My other gun, the one with the red scope, as you can see there, that one weighs over 42 ounces. So it's quite a bit heavier than a stock one. And that's based again on that super, super heavy magwell. But uh, again, with the Tustin, Tustin, Tustin Skyrod, sorry, uh, I'm trying to get as much weight on that part of the nose as, as possible, even though the slide is still relatively very light. I'll give, this, I'll give you the report when I finally go out and test this compensator. But uh, hopefully it works uh, well and, uh, and the felt recoil is, is even better than it was originally. So that's at least that's the intent and the hope. I uh, hope you uh, enjoy this little review. Again, I'm going to be doing a, a review on the ammo side of it as well. We'll be shooting 9 Major and uh, using uh, Bayou projectiles, which is really, really great. It's really, it, it keeps the price way down and they're great to deal with. So I'll do a review on those projectiles as well in the near future. But I uh, hope you guys get into this open business with the Glocks, they're a lot of fun. And uh, shooting open is great and you can definitely shoot nine major without a huge issue. All right, thanks a lot.